how to navigate your stress response. So two things I want to talk about um, in regards to this subject. Uh, the first is the belief. Um, uh, this is a belief that I think is um, uh, repeated quite often in the yoga community that breathing deeper, breathing bigger is always better. And uh, first I would like to say that that is highly contextual. The second thing that, um, that I'd like you to consider is that we are highly stressed as human beings in this modern climate. Um, and this may be uh, a lower level of stress than complete um, uh, arousal, high stress activities. Um, but it's fairly common to, or, or fairly safe to assume that people are coming to you from a high stress state. And for you to tell them to breathe deeper, to breathe bigger, might be um, not the, the most optimal language that you can use. Um, and so uh, how I like to describe this is if you were um, sprinting. Um, so if you were sprinting at full speed, fully engaged for as long as you can maintain that full speed, at the end of that experience, you would be out of breath. Um, and that would be a high stress state where your body is panicking to sort of get the carbon dioxide out of the body. Um, so in that type of, a, of a, a situation, do you want to be breathing deeper? Is that actually what's going to help you to balance your uh, autonomic nervous system? Is that what's going to help you to return to an optimal stress pattern? Two other examples that I can give you, one would be cold water exposure. When you initially get into the cold water, and this may be a better example for some of you, that you start to And if you continue that um, deep level of, of, of breathing, of, of hyperventilating, of over-breathing, you're going to continue to ramp up your stress response. You're actually going to render yourself relatively um, out of control of the situation. Um, the only thing that you're going to observe is that you want to escape that situation. Um, the other being maybe a, a really hot sauna. Um, so being in, in really intense heat, um, but I think cold water is probably the most extreme example of that where you get this really sudden rush of feeling out of control, of feeling under a high level of stress. So hyperventilation is associated with over breathing. When we over breathe, we are trying to get rid of CO2 within our system. So that's what the system is doing. It's important to understand that it is completely normal for you to do that when you feel stressed out. However, uh, what ends up happening is with these forceful over breathing, we are breathing into our chest. We're breathing loud and fast. We are breathing through our mouth. We are breathing more rapidly, more quickly, and that's actually contributing to the stress. And on another level, that is restricting our blood flow um, and oxygen flow, and that restricts the blood flow and the oxygen flow to the, to the brain as well. So um, it has actually a very negative effect on us when we're trying to um, get out of our stress response, we're trying to get out of a, system, uh, um, a, a stressful situation. This actually ramps up more stress because it's saying this is more of an emergency. We have to be in more and more and more of a stress state. So if you want to, um, if you want to transition from a stress state to a um, state of relaxation, a state of clarity, a state where you have your full faculties, we have to learn to do the opposite. But through doing the opposite, we have um, what you might call, we become uh, air starved, um, where you, your brain is searching for more air. Um, because if we slow down this hyperventilation, if we override our system, the brain is gonna be like, but where am I gonna get my oxygen from? The reality is that you will get the same amount of oxygen, uh, roughly, as you would get if you were hyperventilating. 
The only difference is, is that you're going to get more CO2. And long term, you're actually going to um, reset your brain's CO2 receptors so that you can handle more and more CO2, so that you can be calmer and calmer and calmer in more stressful situations. And so when, instead of upper breathe, chest breathing, we want to breathe diaphragmically. We want to push the diaphragm down, we want to push the shoulders down, to push the breath down. Instead of loud and fast, we want to breathe quiet and slow. Instead of breathing through the mouth, breathing through the nose. Instead of breathing more, we're going to breathe less to reset the optimal breath pattern. And initially, as you do this, this is going to feel like the incorrect thing to do. That your brain and your nervous system is going to tell you this is not the right um, choice for you to make. And so again, that manifests itself in this feeling of needing more oxygen, of, of being air starved. Um, and so what we want to do when we're initially working on this practice that we'll work on in the next um, video um, is to just go to a level where you can, um, where you're uncomfortable, but you're not panicking to, to open your mouth, panicking to breathe into your chest, panicking to breathe loud and fast, panicking to breathe more. So uh, I'll have a couple of, of cues that I use um, to uh, alert you um, of maybe that you're doing that unconsciously. So you want to understand that this is part of this process of changing this back and changing this back more and more efficiently and being able to deal with higher and higher levels of stress. So similarly, again, to this idea of the um, cold water immersion is, is that initially it's going to feel cold. Initially, your brain and your nervous system is going to tell you to get out of there as quickly as possible. So it's not a good idea for you to go into you know, the most freezing water that's going to force you to run because you cannot handle that. But to be slightly uncomfortable that's where we want to go with this experience, with that type of experience, with um, this next exercise, is you're, you're creating this air hunger um, sensation, but it's just enough to make you a little uncomfortable, that you are breathing in the diaphragm, that you're quieting and slowing the breath down, you're breathing through your nose, your mouth is closed, um, and it's slightly uncomfortable. That's what we're aiming for in the next practice.